Hi, this is Simon Obstall and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And today we're going to be taking a look at this Fibonacci spiral effect. Now, it looks really quite complicated, but the reality is that it's surprisingly simple to achieve. And there's lots of ways in which you can customize it. And in fact, at the end, we'll be looking at the easy way in which you can create this very different version. So let's make a start on this. So first of all, let's check up on our project setup. So I'm going with 1920, 1080, 30 frames a second, and my project duration is 30 seconds. So the first thing I'm going to do is just create a background. So come to generators and color solid. Let's just adjust that color. Let's desaturate it quite a bit and bring its brightness way down like that. And then let's come over and import a texture. So import, come to our assets folder, tunnel wall drips, bring that in. Let's come over and set its blend mode to multiply. I'm going to set their scale to zero, and then I'm going to apply a ramp behavior to this. So add a ramp to that. And my start value is going to be 75, and my end value is going to be 100. And then I'm going to come over to filters and distortion, and I'm going to apply the polar filter, which does this and has this nice effect of turning it into a kind of a tunnel. And let's also animate its rotation. So let's come to the rotation, right click here, add parameter behavior and rate. And what we're going to have is a rate of negative 6.18, just for fun. If you've watched my Fibonacci tutorial, you'll understand why I'm using that number. But really, you can have any rate you want. So the next thing I'm going to do is make a new group. So object new group, and I'm going to come down and select the circle tool, holding down the shift key, draw out a small circle, center it up, come over to shape, geometry, and let's set this radius to three. And over in style, I'm going to set its feather to two. Then we can make an emitter out of this. So object make particles. So point is fine for the shape. I'm going to set the emission range to zero. You'll see that fires them out to the side like that. I'm going to set the birth rate to 100. I'm going to set the life to something like 6.5. I'm going to have 150 for the speed and two for the speed randomness because I want a little bit of kind of variation on this. I want to turn on additive blend. And here under color mode, I want to select over life and it gives us this default. And I want to set this color here to be white. And this one here, I think that's probably okay. Maybe just go with slightly less saturation and a little bit more brightness. And I also want to click on the top here to set a new opacity tab and drag that all the way to the right and set that opacity value down to zero. So they will they will start fading off over life. And I'm also going to come down and set the scale to 50 and the scale randomness to 10. I also want to add behaviors, uh, particles, scale over life. Uh, for the scale, I'm going to choose custom and let's open up the editor here. Let's option click here to set a scale keyframe. And that position uh, wants to be at 10. And the scale value there wants to be 100. And then let's grab this last scale keyframe. And that value wants to be 270. So they grow very quickly and then they grow a little bit more slowly up to 270. So now to get the Fibonacci spiral, which is the, the basis of this whole effect, what we're going to do is we're going to animate the rotation of the emitter. And so you'll, if you've watched my other Fibonacci sunflower tutorial, you'll understand what I'm doing here. So I'm going to add a rate behavior to the rotation. And the rate is going to be 61.8, which is the magic number. And you can see this gives us this lovely 
organic Fibonacci spiral. I won't go into too much detail about the mass of that here because, as I say, I've covered that in my other tutorial. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this emitter. So right click, duplicate. So what we want to do with this one is instead of this sort of more defined line, uh, we want to kind of create some more random uh, sparks, dust, whatever you want to call it, radiating off this line. So I'm going to reduce the birth rate for this down to 30. I'm going to increase the speed up to 200. Maybe increase that life. Let's go for 10 for the life. And the speed randomness, importantly, is going to be 50. And you can see now how that is starting to spiral off the main curve like that. And for these, I'm going to come down and set the scale randomness up to 50% as well. Then I'm going to duplicate this emitter again to get some more variation into these uh, stray particles. So right-click duplicate. And for this one, I'm going to increase the birth rate to 50. Uh, reduce the life down to 7. Reduce the speed down to 140. That speed randomness is good. And everything else is good. So that's just kind of giving us more of a spread of those particles like that. So I've renamed my background group as background and this group as particles. And let's close down both those groups. So what I'm going to do with this particle group is to make a clone of it. So right click and make a clone layer and let's turn off the original group. And so with this clone, I can make a replicator and this is where it all starts to come together. So object replicate. So I want to switch the shape to line and zero at the start and end X points like that. And I'm going to have 11 points. Now the key thing here is to set the angle end for this. And I'm going to go with 327.27. So to get that number, I've taken 360 degrees, which is a full rotation. I've divided it by 11, and then I've subtracted the result from 360. Just so these 11 instances are evenly spread around a circle. And what I also want to do is turn on additive blend here, so that where they overlap, they're going to be a little bit brighter. And let's just move forward down the timeline so you can see how this is developing. So what we then need to do to complete the effect is to take this replicator and make a clone of it. So make a clone layer. And we're going to come to the X rotation and set that value to 180 degrees. And you can see how we've now generated this beautiful flower effect. I just set that blend mode to linear dodge. Probably doesn't make a great deal of difference, but you might just add the particles together a little bit nicer. So there you go. Uh, but one of the things that I decided I would be interesting to experiment with is to come to the scale and play with the X value. So if we, for example, were to go for 25% for that X scale, you can see we've got this very different result. And as we sort of scroll upwards, we get a continuously evolving pattern like that, which is really interesting. So what I decided to do was, was, was kind of animate this over the duration of the sequence. So let's come to the first frame. And I think I started with a higher value, but let's actually start with 25. Set a keyframe there, come to the end and set that value to something like 125. And now it's kind of starts from nothing, obviously, because our particles are starting from nothing, and it just gradually evolves over the over the duration. And I think that's a really interesting effect that we can we can go with. The other thing to bear in mind is is I've fairly arbitrarily chosen eleven points, but you can really go with anything. That all you have to do is make sure to swap out that angle end. So, for example, we could go crazy and have twenty one points, and then we would need to come over and just check what that end rotation needs to be. So we've got 342.85. So let's plug that in, 342.85. And that just neatens it all up. And you can see how complex that is. Really exotic looking result. Or we could go the other way. Let's try uh, something small like five maybe. So that gives us 288 for the angle. So five points. And then 
0.288 for the angle. A lot less interesting, but you know, it's still evolving because we're, we're doing that animation of the X scale. And of course you could animate the Y scale as well. You know, that's, that's also going to create different effects. So you could probably animate them in a different direction. I mean, there's literally no end to what you can actually do with this. So I think I'd go back to 21 points. That's really rather nice. And another way to make this look really good is to add a lovely glow effect to it. So let's add super glow to that. And then just adjust the glow values until we've got something that we like the look of. And, you know, that looks rather nice. Uh, but you could experiment, you know, with the built-in neon effect if you wanted. So that's the effect complete. But I, before we go, I just wanted to show you that we can actually create something very different just with a few simple changes. So first of all, I'm going to turn off that clone layer, come back into the replicator. Uh, I've got 21 points here, that's good. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the 3D switch and then for the angle end, we've got three values now that we can plug in. And for the X, I'm going to go with 90, 90 for the Y, and 360 for the Z. And you can see we've now got this really interesting spiraling effect that is asymmetrical, nothing like a flower, but, but it's really interesting. And we've got this lovely 3D depth to it as well. So I'd encourage you to, to experiment with the different ways in which you can adapt this simply by playing around with some of these basic values. So, hope that's been an interesting one. Thanks very much indeed for watching, and I'll see you again soon.